Uh, welcome inside the Faith Loop. Uh, hope you are having a great day in the Lord and uh, that um, we've got some uh, opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ and we appreciate you uh, starting your day with us. As always, I have my dad, Pastor Robert French, with us and uh, we're going to be talking today about who can you trust? And trust is a is a a dynamic word that I don't think we've understood very much. And before we get into the topic, uh, please, if you're enjoying what you're watching, uh, I know we're doing these things live, please hit that like button. Hit the like button. It helps us. Um, gives me a... I, I appreciate your liking us. <laughs> Comment. If you have a question, if you have something as this goes on, throw it in there. We'd love to hear from you. And please share this out to uh, your friends, your family. We, we hope that we can be a, uh, bring some sanity into uh, really an insane world. And we know that. It's, it's moving ever darker, and I think we need to share these things out. So please, uh, we appreciate that very much. We appreciate your support. Trust. Trust, trust, trust. Who can we trust? <laughs> My mind went blank. Yeah, there's only one name, Jesus. And this is the thing. This is the topic, isn't it? We, we, I, we were talking before we, we, we started this, and I said, to, I said to Dad, every year we talk about trusting what, what a politician is saying or this person or that person, Supreme Court this, this, what our law enforcement, all the things around us within this country, within the world. And every time we turn around, we hear people complaining, griping, oh, how come that person is doing that? I can't believe they're doing that. But yet, they say, please trust what we say. Oh, we're telling you the truth. This is trust, trust, trust what we say. How can we? Well, we have so many examples of that. One of them is, is our Supreme Court, the way it sits now. When certain justices were seated, like Kavanaugh and Amy Comey Barrett and uh, others, Alito and Thomas and so forth, they were fought by the opposition hard because they said they were conservatives. Right, right. And uh, we saw this last time when Amy Comey Barrett was... Uh, seated. Uh, they didn't fight as hard as they did against Kavanaugh, but yet their opposition to her was because she was a conservative. Well, okay. Now, we, 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 we supposedly have a, a conservative majority in the court. Just a headline right there. Did you want to read that? or? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, because it goes right to, you know, because this is a big part of this. Yes. And the other part of this, too, Dad, just real quick before we do this, yeah. to your point, is they're supposed to, I'm trying to remember the terminology, but for lack of a better way to put it, constitutional purists in that respect, or jurists, you know, it's, it's following the Constitution, not, yes. it's about interpretation or, and not interpretation, but, but what literal, yes. literal, 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 um, Constitution, and these were some. This was one of the big reasons for Kavanaugh and recently Amy Comey Barrett, because the Constitution, what it says, it stands, not interpretation of. Right. And so the Supreme Court. Uh, this is in the Christian Post today. Uh, the Supreme Court voids ruling that allowed temporary abortion ban in Texas. Now, how does it? How does the federal government overrule the state? Well, and then are they for abortion? They're supposed to be conservatives. They're supposed to be uh, people that uh, believe what the Constitution says. And there's nothing in the Constitution of the United States about this at all. Uh, you know, we yeah. continue to kill millions and millions of babies with no conscience at all. Uh, my, you know, my question has always been, I wonder if you walk them into an abortion clinic and uh, let them stand there during certain kinds of abortions, and I'm not going to get too uh, well, uh, explicit yeah. here, but I wonder if they could stand there and watch it or if they could do it themselves. 
No, they always want somebody else to do it. Leave it up to somebody else. As long as, I, as long as we don't have to look at it, as long as we don't have to see it, you know, it's okay. So, trust them? No, I don't trust them any farther than I get spit. Well, and here's, here's the next headline right down here on the same page, right on the Christian Post. It says, Biden attends mass at D.C. church that prayed for the dignity of the unborn. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity, in my opinion, is just unbelievable. And right here, when you see these two things in this respect, just in this, this one page, trust? Trust what? But when are we going to trust in the truth of the gospel and stand up for something and not just... See, we're trying to fight this on the same level as they do. We get into the, 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 the war of the knowledge of good and evil versus life. And it's, or uh, we get into the war of just the knowledge of good and evil. And we're the good guys, you're the bad guys. Yeah. It's the wrong war, friends. Our trust is not in politicians, in government, in Supreme Courts, in justices that evidently have no understanding of any kind of standard of life itself. Because if you want to, if you're going to say, nobody wants to overturn Roe v. Wade. No. Nobody. Nobody. You can say what you want to, but it's evident that nobody wants to do this. Not in power to do it. Right? Right. But yet, everybody talks about it. This is what all these things... I'm just going to follow the law. So it's okay to murder babies. It's just okay to kill babies in the womb. I just, that is just beyond absurd. And if we sit here and talk about these things, well, it's, you know, it's in the Constitution. No, it isn't. I've read the Constitution. It doesn't say we can kill babies in the womb. No. And I don't care how you interpret it, how you say it, how you want to, and pro-choice, pro-life, and all the things that we get into. What does it matter if we are going to trust in, and I'm going to go back to this because this is my topic, and you can look across the board. I have the Christian Post open. Uh, if you look at Christianity Today, the articles in here, uh, a Christian approach to social justice is slow, careful, and self-reflective. We just brought up one thing with abortion, social justice. Tell me what social justice is. I know what Thomas Aquinas thought of it, and this is exactly where they're going. I know it. I've looked at history. Uh, Thomas Aquinas took a lot of his uh, information, his Christian theology, out of Aristotelian uh, thought through natural law, which is part of the Enlightenment thinking, which is part of exactly what we see in our Constitution today. Everything is about this world, not Jesus Christ. CBN News, they've got up Chief Justice Roberts won't preside over Senate impeachment. They're still trying to impeach our president, uh, uh, not our president, but Past president. former president. Over what? We have no idea. Nope. Inciting a riot. Uh, yeah. No matter what the facts show, trust? Who are we trusting? If you look at Remnant newspaper, they're doing the same thing. They're just, uh, it's the same thought process. It's a Catholic publication. Uh, talking about the war on COVID, law and order, making America globalist again. Uh, we're still into the political stuff. The Baptist News Global, um, SBC pastor calls Vice President Kamala Harris a Jezebel. I mean... Um, Charisma News, some of their highlight articles, you know, amid election chaos, we must contend, press forward in faith, not fear. But how? What do we, you know, but where, what do we trust? I mean, these are all the articles. This is across the board. And you know what's funny, though? You go down here and you look at this stuff, and this kills me. We have, this is on Charisma News, German charismatic church teens visit Israel to atone for family Holocaust history. That's a social justice thought process. 
Uh, then we have spirit-filled finance advisor. How long will the stock market party last? This is what we're this is what we're engaged in. These are articles on these newspapers or on these periodicals. I don't have a problem with the periodicals. I like them. There's a lot of articles that I read that are informational, that are interesting. Um, but what I am finding more and more and more and more is this thought process of where is Jesus Christ? Well, he's nowhere to be found in most of them because they, they, they approach everything from a geopolitical way of doing it. Uh, I've said this for many years, uh, I'm not a religious man. That really shocks some people when they think, well, you're a pastor and, and, all, and you're not religious. No, I'm not religious. I don't even believe in religion. Because religion is a man-made thing built on man-made structures. Uh, the Bible tells us there's one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. And yet we have over 30,000 different religions in the United States, and they all disagree with each other coming from the same Bible. Well, it's denominations. Denomina yes, religious organizations, denominations. And they all read the same Bible, use it as their base, and yet disagree severely in some areas. Uh, so which one? They tell us that God dwells in these buildings we call churches. Which one? Well, all of them. Okay. Uh, the Scripture tells us that the Lord said He would no longer put His name in a building. Once they desecrated the temple that Solomon built, He said, I won't put my name there anymore, but I'll write my name in their hearts, and I'll put it in their minds, mm -hmm. and they will be my people, and I will be their God. But what Part of that Bible don't we understand? Uh, we still go to the natural way of looking at things. Buildings, property, land. And uh, that seems to be more important than anything else we do. Yeah, yeah. And we're putting ourselves in this place of the, the language of man. You know, we, we read a lot about... Um, and talk a lot about revelation and and all the apocalyptic thought process. Well, and we we uh, we equate the word apocalyptic <clears throat> with doom and destruction and right. all this, which isn't really isn't the meaning of the word. It just means something revealed. Jesus revealed to man, to John, what soon must take place. That's what it says in that first group. This is what soon must take place. Okay. Well, right now, we're at about 2,000 years. Yeah. Okay, fine. Very close. Fine. So, we again, soon to me, in an eternal thought process, soon could be, you know, soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what, what do we take away from this? And we sit here and we speak, <clears throat> speak, speak about faith, being confident, having trust. We trust in Jesus. I hear this term, trust in, trust in the Lord, trust in Jesus, trust in Jesus. Yet, we are still working desperately to try and create some sort of political solution to, to make man righteous. If we can just overturn Roe v. Wade, that will make us righteous again and God will forgive us and heal our land. That's... That's, that stuff's long gone. That was Israel in certain respects this way. Those things, that covenant which he had set forth with Moses, though those things are they're gone. That covenant there, it is, as Dad said, I will write it in their mind and in their inward parts, and I will be their God and they will be my people. I'm not going to commit abortion or any, no matter what the law of this country says, I don't believe in it. These are the things that are righteous as a person. And my trust goes into Jesus Christ, not into a government of men that from out, think one thing and say another. Out of one side of their mouth, they say this, and out of the other side of the mouth, they say that. I can't trust that. What am I trusting in? 
Well, it, it goes to this. It goes to motive, and I've said this for many years. Yes. It goes to motive. You could be anti-abortion and have not, be an atheist. Right. Uh, it has nothing to do necessarily with Scripture, with God, Jesus, or anything else. It can be just a moral position. Uh, right. And many people are that way. Yeah. Uh, this is what Israel did. They, they left Jehovah out of the equation eventually. They eventually just left him out. And they began to believe that as long as they did this and did that, they could still maybe mix in a little idol worship and all of this other stuff. Uh, because, after, you know, after all, we're good people. Well, <laughs> yeah. Good people doesn't mean nothing. We could stop abortion and, and still miss the boat. Right. Because why? Why? Are we doing it because we love Jehovah? We love the Lord? We, we're going to obey the words of Jesus Christ and repent and be the people He wanted us to be? Or are we just doing it uh, because it's some humanitarian thing that right. uh, we feel good about if right. uh, we can get it done? That won't get it done. Only repentance gets it done. Only bowing your knee and saying, Father, I, I, I'm, why would we even think about doing it in the first place? See, that's the thing. Right, Dad. Right. Because the, the world is, is essentially godless. Yes. And, uh, I mean, they serve a lot of gods, but they don't serve the real one. And so they threw him out of everywhere they could throw him out of and denigrated him. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's funny, too. Here's, they, they show Joe Biden going to Mass Right, uh, and that's wonderful and great, and all of this. They showed uh, Trump going to uh, a church with a Bible in his hand, and they uh, nearly uh, did accused, everything. But yeah, accused him of grandstanding. Oh all yeah, that's just, just a denigrated him and everything else. So, an so show me where there's any real uh, something I can trust. Uh, what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander, and what's on this side. So what is the motive behind what they're doing? It isn't pure. It isn't righteous. No. It isn't good. It's hate. It's just pure hatred. And and here's the other part of this too. And and I want to make this point clear. It's not that I thought Trump. I thought maybe he was grandstanding a little bit myself. So is he. I do, it, <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm saying. I it's you have to understand this isn't about I, I'm I'm for Trump and not for Biden or for Biden not for Trump. That's I'm for Jesus Christ. Yes. That's it. Period. Just an example. President Trump was part of the same hypocrisy <clears throat> as we are talking about with, with this administration. Same stuff, man. Same motives. Same thought process. It has nothing to do with bringing in or ushering in the kingdom of God. It has to do with ushering in and bringing in their own ideas of rule and standard. And that has got to be where we draw the line at some point. It is not about building back America or making America great again. It's about fundamentally understanding that Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life that is afforded to men. Period. Well, here's the thing. You know, we talk about idol worship, and we think immediately of a statue, a stone, uh, an image, a painting, an icon, as they call them, and that's what we immediately think of when we think of idols. But you can also make a nation an idol. Yep. And this is exactly what Israel did. They became so egotistical about their own nation that they forgot all the other nations that were in the world that God actually asked them to be a light to. So I don't have time to go into all of that, uh, ramifications of that, but nev nevertheless, they begin to believe their nation was was what they had and it was what was powerful and it was what we had to possess they tell jesus we have abraham to our father we're israelites this is the nation of israel and that's what they wanted jesus to do they wanted him to help them restore the nation not restore the kingdom of god or restore truth but the nation no matter how the nation was. We're doing the same thing. So what are we doing? Yeah. Do we worship the United States of America or do we worship Jehovah? Now, having said that, if we repented and lived as the Lord would have us to, would he not bless the nation? Absolutely. He'd bless the people. He'd bless the people, which is the nation. But that's and that's it. It's a matter of it's a matter of prospering the people. Yes. But that's blessing the nation. And if they if if 
but we're not going to now when I when I say nation that's what I mean I mean the people I'm not talking about the governments or or the that's institutions just, and so forth right. I'm talking about the nation as a whole would prosper the people would prosper they would walk in blessing any nation in the world any of them France Italy Germany Spain Britain Russia China any of them if they would walk in the statutes of the Lord Jesus Christ it would bring a blessing on the whole earth. But they don't do it. Trust. Who do you trust, folks? And that is the point we're making here. We have to, find, we have to begin to trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I don't see these people being very trustworthy, not saying things uh, in what they say, what they do, how they do, and whatnot. It's a matter of standing up and saying what is true and right and real. So... Thank you for joining us today. Again, please, if you enjoyed what we talked about today, hit that like button. Leave us a comment. Leave us, uh, you know, ask the questions. Throw in your thoughts in there. We appreciate that. And share it out with your friends. We appreciate that very much. Everybody have a great day in the Lord. And remember to always give love, give life, and give Jesus. We'll see you next time. Amen.